this one is related to my work in debugging some issues with uh, timekeeping uh, time keeping and uh, block devices uh, virtualization <coughs> in uh, snapshot functionality. So, as I've said, uh, we want to save the state of all the devices, the CPU and the memory to the disk and then later be able to create a, another virtual machine that uh, runs the same without uh, having any visible different, uh, without being functionally different from the initial one. Um, under Linux, this was somewhat problematic because um, for instance, when trying to run a while loop that displays the time before the snapshot, it works fine. Uh, it displays the current time every second, but uh, after a restore, it was completely stuck. The virtual machine uh, either did not respond or had to be manually interrupted by pressing the Ctrl C to cancel the command. All uh, subsequent attempts to run date displayed the exact same time which um, was indicative of the fact that the guest was unable to see that the time was moving on. Um, this caused the sleep to never end basically. And for Windows you had a little frozen screen. Uh, nothing really worked. Um, no input, no output, we couldn't really connect to it using SSH or anything really. Uh, seemingly because I think the Windows guests have really hard, uh, are really hard tied to the um, functionality of the visual interface, of the graphical user interface. And if data doesn't work, it doesn't refresh, no program was able to run. So, what's, why was this caused? Well, timers are one of the back, uh, one of the issues because uh, the operating systems use timers to do certain tasks. For example, in the uh, Unix system, sleep n uh, is expected to end after n seconds. In Windows, uh, the graphical user interface attempts to refresh itself after every uh, n microseconds which means that if the timer does not end the user interface will never update. The local peak virtualization uses the fact uh, has to consider the fact that the APIC implements a timer for each CPU. So we have to save the current value of the timer and reprogram the callouts in order to uh, rerun the timer when restoring the virtual machine. The HPET uh, uses a permanently incremented, ti incremented timer and uh, when creating the snapshot we have to save the current value of the time and use it as an offset when uh, restoring the virtual machine. A clock source is uh, used by the operating system to measure time. It is basically a monotonic timer. It increments permanently and uh, the operating system may measure time by measuring the value of the timer at of the clock source, sorry, uh, at the different times and by Subtracting the values will measure how much time has passed between the poles. <laughs> the timestamp counter is a per CPU register and, and is incremented at CPU frequency. Uh, can be incremented at static rate by using a certain uh, ex a CPU extension that is not always available on all systems. We are uh, relying somewhat on the fact that uh, modern CPUs all offer this uh, possibility in order to simplify the virtualization of the TSC. So, uh, the virtualization 
uses uh, a specific uh, MSR, the PSC offset, that uh, is automatically added when the uh, when the guest tries to read the value of the timestamp counter. The timestamp counter of the as seen by the guest is the timestamp counter of the system to which we add the offset uh, of the TSC. So when we did this, uh, because um, we saw that um, after a couple of minutes, after rebooting the host, uh, the issues always appeared when rebooting the host and then attempting to restore the virtual machine. After a few minutes, usually uh, five, ten, sometimes going up to half an hour, um, the guest resumed functionality. This was because the value of the timestamp counter, which was not virtualized, was reset to zero whenever the host was uh, rebooted. And we had to wait until the value surpassed the, uh, the value of the TSC of the system, surpassed the value at which uh, the snapshot was created. When we did this, uh, basically, when saving the state of the virtual machine, grab the value of the system TSC as seen by the guest, and then uh, at restore time, grab the value of the TSC and subtracting the two, and then using this as an offset, the, neither the Linux nor the Windows VM would uh, be stuck because the TSC as seen by the guest would continue incrementing from, incrementing from the value they knew. Um, I'd like to thank Matthew Grooms, IX Systems, and Marcelo uh, for their help. Um, Matthew Grooms and IX Systems provided me with some financial help, and Marcelo was always uh, someone who, could, who I could rely on to give me some technical <laughs> view on, the, on how to write the code. Yeah. How, um, I have a couple questions. The yeah. first yeah. was, um, do you, in the save and restore, or, or I think it's just called the send and restore, sure. um, do you handle migration across both system machines or servers? Uh, this will be part of Elena's talk. Uh, no. Uh, the issue with this is that we are currently not having a completely stable system even when suspending and resuming on the same system. There, there are some issues. Uh, we'll have to identify if we want to try to migrate from uh, diff from guests, uh, from hosts, sorry, with the different CPUs, we'll have to identify which CPU, uh, which CPU registers are enough in order to reset the functionality because Intel and uh, AMD CPUs do not have the same control uh, structure. Right, VMCS and uh, VMX. Right, I was thinking not so much around migrating between Intel and AMD, more along the lines of migrating between CPUs with different compute capabilities. Uh, so do you mask off the future capabilities with the actual port, and then you don't allow migration to the host that doesn't have compatible mask? Basically, the lowest common denominator for failure to resolve that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good approach. I'm not entirely sure because I did not work personally on uh, migration. Um, we, as far as I know, we have uh, opted to completely block any migration to a different CPU type. Uh, if it, this functionality were to be extended, I think we could create the, that. Uh, common denominator you, you talked about, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure how the process of identifying which features would be enough in order to make sure that the guest would not crash. Yeah, right. it, it, it's actually, it, it, you guys will talk about it later, it's fine, but it's actually yeah. fairly straightforward because the, the Red Personal Factory already has a set of CPU clients that are masked off, which basically you have to make sure that you're not sending anything that doesn't match that set. So 
It actually is hot. It's difficult to sound, but I'm happy to talk about it. Okay, um, sure. Uh, uh, also, uh, a couple of questions about yeah. the timestamp counter. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of issues with timestamp counter as well. Um, and not so much around the migrating, although I suspect that if you tried to migrate the way that you guys did, you probably run into some problems. Again, this is, this is not really migration. Um, Elena's talk will be about migration. Mine was about uh, suspending and resuming the and, virtual machine. And I'm sorry, I misspoke. I meant suspending and migrating. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have the, the area that we saw we had a problem with was around um, machines where you would suspend, resume it on a different machine, not a, not really a live migration, but just okay. resume it on a different machine with. Um, Different than TXT gate, and the other problem we had was CPUs that changed their TXT signature based on the power set. So you had a TXT that is not a function code. So do you handle? Do you guys do you run into the problem of needing to handle non-constant uh, TXT uh, rendering? No, the we are. Th this is a somewhat. Work in progress, and uh, the issues you are talking about are among the things that we are expecting to arise in time. Um, we basically were two or three people that tested this and really had three or four si physical systems to run this on. Um, all of them, I think, are quite new and uh, had the constant uh, TSC increment, so no, we haven't. And, 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 this issue. and the related question would be if you have a problem with um, unsynchronized scripts across different boards, where the actual TST counter value is different across the different boards. So this has your code handling just start at zero? I know that um, there's code in Beehive. The action of TXT in MSR is writable in Beehive and triggered, it actually changes the offset. Uh, yeah, but when the, when the guest tries to write to TSC, a trap is uh, triggered and uh, the TSC offset MSR is computed by the value that the guest tried to write minus the value of the TSC right now. Right. So that's so that will work as provided that the guest does that across all of the CPU lines in the group because you're going to otherwise have unsynchronized scripts. Uh, Yes, I, I think the trap only goes as far as to set the value for a certain vCPU. Um, for restore, we are setting it for all vCPUs because we are not sure how it would uh, behave otherwise. But uh, the generic code that tr actually traps the write to the MSR is stuck to the vCPU. It doesn't iterate through all VCPUs to set it. And, and one last question, sorry not to keep you guys away. Because where the TXC has been a big problem for us too. Oh yeah. Fresh in the mind. Um, did you ever look at TXC scaling? There is uh, a register that you can use to apply. Yeah, yeah I, I know I know about it, but uh, as far as I as far as I know, I looked into it in Beehive and I don't think I've seen it used at all. I think it would be more useful. Otherwise, the clock is speed up or slow down. Uh, yeah, sure. That would be uh, that would be a thing. I'm not sure how it, how I, I haven't actually seen. I've never seen it used the scaling to be able to put it into perspective how useful it would be. Uh, the issue you said to resetting to a CPU <coughs> with a different rate um, at our current point is not an issue because we are limiting it to the same CPU, so it shouldn't have different rates. But uh, yes, scaling would be an I a good idea to extend this functionality to CPUs that uh, may have different rates. Yeah, we, we were supporting or at least trying to support the ability to save the snapshot and to restore the snapshot on a different machine. And what we, what we ran into was the, the, of course the scaling problem and what we found was the scaling value that you can pull down into the register is not present all the time because it's a sensitive floating point value yeah. that you're writing into an MSR. And you can 
never be too close to science to get the rate of factor correct. So if you run that problem, you can find a way to solve that at least in high school at some point. You should. Yeah, next um, year or something. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, a, it's a really great idea. If you can put it somewhere in the review, just throw it there as an idea so we don't forget about it. It would be, okay. great. It would be great. great. Uh, let me Any other questions? No? Uh, then I'd like to invite Elena to talk about uh, the migration of the virtual machines. <laughs>